salvation is the starting line. Once we give our whole lives and our hearts and our minds to Jesus, we are now in the body of Christ. We are a new creation, the Bible says, and as a new creation, it is something like the world has never seen before. And we have each been given purpose and a calling. We are called to push you to go even farther within that purpose, to dream big with Jesus, to know that the same power that raised Christ from the dead now lives inside of you. And like we always say here at Dream On, those who dream the most, do the most. The best is yet to come. Welcome to Honduras. We made it back to the same soccer field that we were at last year. God did amazing things on this field, and we know that it goes from glory to glory. And so we're excited, um, anticipating this whole field being full of people this year. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Dreams restored is what we're believing for. So join us on the journey. Picture of a picture. Video of the video. <laughs> We went to uh, Pastor Wilmer's church, uh, would have been the first night we arrived in Honduras, and I'd been in Pastor Wilmer's church many times before, but it's always very special when you can bring even more people with you, like we did this year from the team and from Ohio, and it was just a normal worship service in Honduras and a normal um, church service, I guess you could say, but every time that I've been in a church service with Wilmer, uh, Wilmer's band and Freedom Band, from the very first note on the piano to the very first strum of the guitar, the Holy Spirit just always falls so strongly. And it did the same, same way that Thursday night. We just entered into celebration and then into worship and just the Holy Spirit was so strong. There were miracles and people just receiving hope. It was a special moment for the team to be able to see that the presence of God was was gonna come into the church service no matter what country we were in, no matter the language barriers, no matter any of that, that the Holy Spirit can invade a place anywhere um, in the world. So we were thankful. I really loved like all the dancing and how happy they were. I loved it how Wilmer welcomed us as people attending his church for the first time but still made us feel like family. I also love the kids just coming up and hugging us and loving on us just unconditionally. The majority of the people in the building are children. There might be five men out of a hundred people. The rest are maybe some moms, women, but everybody else is just children. And all of the rows in the front of the church are just filled with little kids. Four, five, ten, fifteen years old. And these kids are there because somebody loves them. So Dream On went in as another, another event, and we were part of that, and we watched God love on them. It was in that moment for me while I was there that night. Every time I go to Honduras, when I go to Pastor Wilmer's church, all of a sudden the awe-inspiring presence of who God is overcomes me again. And I realize every time I'm there, this is why we are taking Dream On to Honduras because the Lord wants to make a change, the Lord wants to impact their lives, and the Lord is so ready, He's so close. And all you have to do is ask. And so when we are there in Pastor Wilmer's service, we as a group, we're asking, but the Honduran people there, they're asking every time they show up. So seeing that always brings me back to what my whole purpose as a human being is, and that is no matter where I am, is to be able to give somebody hope about what God can do in their situation. You could really feel the presence of God even though you had no idea what they were saying. Um, you're just crying out to God like with thankfulness and gratefulness, and it was just incredible. Like, there, there are no words. 
Friday, we went and uh, we threw a, a pizza party for it was like 400 kids, and it was amazing. We went to a shanty town, which is basically a very, very poor area that had they don't have running water or electricity or anything like that, and to be able to buy 100 pizzas and grow pizzas for everyone it was just amazing. So uh, it was very cool to see them uh, have hope and just be encouraged with just something as simple. It just shows the simplicity of the gospel, bringing them hope through through uh, uh, food and and just teaching and loving on them, giving them hugs, all those types of things. It shows how amazing just uh, giving purpose is and the effects of that. So, absolutely. We have so much and they don't have it, but that was just outstanding to me and so thankful that I got to be a part of that. See these little kids just coming up to you and trying to hug on you. They want love. They really do. They want love. That was an awesome thing to be able to reach out to them and give them the food and the pop and just to see their reaction and share Jesus with them. The pizza party was crazy. Uh, there were so many kids and you could tell they don't get that kind of food. I don't know. It was just so amazing to see their faces when they see pizza. Like we take pizza for granted here. My main experience was being able to see how happy they were and just giving them hope. I love being able to show them that they're loved and uh, that Jesus loves them and just remind them that they can dream and that, that God has put a dream in each of their hearts and that through Him they can change the face of Honduras, uh, they can change the world and um, I think it's just a reminder on the personal level that, that through Jesus we can do all things. Uh, we can go out into the world and, and we can change it for, for Him and, and make Jesus the face of our world. So as we left the pizza party, we got back into the, the vans and we went through bump after bump on these roads and we traveled to another shanty town and we experienced the same atmosphere and the same need and lack of hope. Seeing our team interact with that and watching them walk back out of that situation and saying, how can we get water in there? How can we get a roof on this really small church that all it has is walls? And these people are so excited that we're there. They're so excited to show us their church that doesn't have a roof. Watching the team come back out of that shanty town and wanting to make a change, they were very, very adamant. So that was something, again, I was kind of organizing in my mind, watching the changes in the group that had gone with us and seeing them incrementally start to really grasp what was happening. Why did Dream On take a group of people there? It was to make a change. So we, uh, we had breakout sessions, which we have every year for um, the Dream On Conference, and it's always exciting to see the, the team get pushed out of their comfort zone. Some of the people that did breakout sessions from our team um, initially didn't want to, or that just wasn't their, their thing, but uh, we at Dream On always, we, we, we want to push people into areas where we know they're called to and where we can see that they have a talent and a gift for. So um, I think we had eight breakout speakers. I heard awesome testimonies. Um, the sessions were supposed to be about 45 minutes. Some of them went an hour and a half because the whole room wanted prayed for. I heard amazing things. My mother-in-law uh, taught one of the sessions. So proud of Lori and all that she did there. Um, now we call her the worldwide evangelist. So uh, thankful for the whole team that shared all their gifts and talents um, during the breakout sessions. Um, the services were great. I wish I knew more Spanish because I, I love to worship and honestly I couldn't get into the worship like I should because I didn't understand the English. But I was able to share a message on prayer and um, I was fortunate enough to get the main sanctuary, which was really air conditioned. So I was thankful to God. And I know that sounds selfish, but there were so many people that came to my session and it was just, I just was filled with the Holy Spirit. I had no fear. My interpreters were great. And it was the second year that I went. So it was a little easier this year to work with interpreters, which, you know, that can be hard, but everybody was so responsive. They laughed at my jokes, which is good. And the Holy Spirit was just so evident. So I was very thankful 
that I got to share on prayer and hopefully they went away from there with a newfound understanding of a relationship and communication. That's what prayer is to me. I just feel this, you know, there is some, some of you guys that you would never thought before that God can use you in the way that he's going to keep using you, right? Yeah. Maybe some of you are saying like, who am I? Who am I, Lord? I'm not a great preacher. I'm not that anointed. You know what? God is looking for people who is willing. Yeah, that's right. God is telling you, can I use your hands to hug somebody that is a broken heart, that is just with anxiety and depression? Can I use your mouth just to say somebody I love you? Can I use your feet? So you are here and God is going to use you in a mighty way just because you are willing. That's, that's the key. The reason that God is using me in Honduras is just because I'm willing. There is nothing special in me, I promise to you. It's just willing. Yes. It's just willing. If you see Jesus, his team, what you do, what you do, Benjamin, if, if, if God is asking you, okay, I'm going to save the world, and I want you to choose a team of 12. You, you and me, we're going we're gonna to say, okay, who's smart, has a lot of money, and has power. Jesus used those that they were rejected. Rejected. So we are people that maybe somebody, somebody in a moment says, ah, you are nothing. But we are here. We are Jesus' hands, Jesus' mouth, Jesus' eyes. Right? After the crusade, you know, I do believe that there is going to be tears in your eyes to see many, 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 many people coming to Jesus Christ and being blessed. Are you excited for that? Yeah, yes, yes. I promise to you that your life will never be the same. Come on. You're going to come back to the United States and say, if God did it in Honduras, God can do it in America too. Praying for people, preaching the gospel, you know, in your country. So Dream On Party this year, um, bigger. I mean, than last year, we always, one of the things we always want to do at Dream On is just, uh, like the Bible says, go from glory to glory. Where the party is, it's in the, one of the poorest neighborhoods in San Pedro Sula, so when you, you bring out these giant stages and lights and, and sound and all that, it is just like a shock and all to all these people. We always feel like since we represent Jesus, we should do things with excellence, um, so as, as you watch the videos and see the photos, you'll see that it's a big production. We feel like Jesus needs to be represented very well. There was amazing musicians there. Um, miracle signs and wonders always come about. The spirit of celebration from like, boom, instant, like uh, second number one was just amazing. I, I think I got dehydrated in the first like 45 minutes because I didn't stop dancing. From last year to this year, it was just, uh, it was, it was, I mean, the, I don't even have a word, but it's just powerful. I mean, it's, it's, it's it feels surreal sometimes, um, but it, it feels like heaven on earth um, when you're at the party and it's just the presence of God is so strong and you just want to dance and love and hug and you want to see people healed. It's just amazing. That was remarkable. I loved it how many people showed up. I loved it when they would come up to us and smile and then some of the fun parts is where they're just smiling and like trying to talk to us. Just being with the kids and playing games and worshiping with them, learning their dances that they do with some of them. My favorite thing was just seeing God's miracles and healing people right then and there, even before they got on the stage and just mainly being in God's spirit in a different country. It's everywhere we go. Oh, the giant dream on party. If you've never been there, you have to go. It's amazing to see over 10,000 people show up in a soccer field. They came and they, they hear the word of God. Personally, I love walking through and, and, and just laying hands on people and they allowed me to pray for them. Even though they didn't understand where I was praying, the Holy Spirit understood what I was praying. And they would cry and they would hug me, which made me realize they needed that touch from God. 
And that's what it's all about. It's just that touch from God. That's why we go. And that's why we plant those seeds. God brings in the harvest. All we can do is plant seeds. We're just like farmers. We're out there and we're planting everywhere we go. And God brings in the harvest. And that is what's so awesome about that Honduras trip. They would probably stay all night if we were willing to stay. And they're so hungry for the word. And it just does my heart good to know that we can impact Jesus. We can show them Jesus and show them salvation, show them healing, show them what Jesus is all about, the love of God. Just to spread our arms out and hug them, it makes them feel that love. That moment you experience where the person standing in front of you is being touched by God and you can't help but to feel it too. You can't help but to see it too. It's like you can just look at them and you can see right through them deep inside their heart and you can just see just divine peace coming upon them. You can just see just restoration taking place and you can just see that inward healing just to begin to work within them. And just that feeling of just God being present and doing a work that only he can do, you know, it isn't one-sided. I mean, the team is feeling it. The the, the people there experiencing it who came with that hunger and that thirst, they are getting that refreshing that they came expecting. And that feeling is just, it's really hard to describe. One day, I think it was in the meeting right before the Dream On Party on Saturday, um, the big event, Pastor Daniel Burroughs was talking about how God's going to use us and we need to make sure we're willing to let Him use us. Um, and he said some of us were thinking how insignificant we were and we were thinking, oh, God won't use us, you know. Um, but he was like, no, that's not true. God's going to use you. Um, if you're willing, he's going to use you. He'll use anyone that's willing to let him use their, their hands for him to heal people through. Um, and so that night, um, I saw people, you know, praying over people and lives being changed and healed. And I was, I knew God was going to do something. And I know he was going to, he was healing people. And I had faith, and I was like, God, yes, you're doing stuff. But I didn't feel like I could pray for people on myself, by myself. Um, but, um, and then Samara and Kenzie um, said that there's a lady that needed prayer in the back, and it was in a wheelchair. And uh, so we went, and we took Billy with us. Um, and we went to the very back, and uh, Samara started praying. And then she's like, do you want to pray, too? So like, sure. And uh, so then I prayed after her, and then Kenzie prayed, and Billy, and Brianna, and Nancy came. And this lady was lame in her hands, and she couldn't walk, and her legs couldn't move. And um, after Samara prayed, she started moving her hands together. And we were praising God, and she was weeping. And then all of a sudden, her hands spread apart, and she was praising God and weeping. And uh, it was just amazing that I was able to be in that moment and let God use me um, and use all of us because I've never had that one-on-one -on -one experience before and um, I just know like God will use you and God will use anyone who is willing to let God use them and use let God use their hands to heal people around them there's rare rare times in my life in America where I've experienced that kind of tangible presence of the Lord so quickly, so quickly. And so being there in Honduras on that stage and watching lives being changed, watching people come up the stairs to be prayed for and by the time they got to the front of the stage, they're already healed. Watching team members that have gone with us who had always wanted to be able to pray for people but were either scared, didn't know that they could do it, didn't know how to go about it, I stepped out and they just started doing it and they started seeing drastic miracles. And that is something I will never forget. The healings and the miracles, it was overwhelming to me because I, I see it in the church and I see it from videos from when our pastor goes to Africa or wherever. But to be there in the moment, 
that was, it was life changing. So we went to Honduras to see salvation because that is the starting point. Always, always salvation. But after salvation, we wanted to see a permanent change then physical change in their lives. So we were watching miracles. We were seeing blind eyes open, deaf ears open. And seeing those changes, but then watching our team round that out, like that was the full circle for me. Seeing the team, especially afterwards, be so overcome with joy, so overcome with an amazement at the Lord that they maybe didn't know they could ever actually walk into. They only thought the special pastor or the special speaker could do that. No, they did it. They were the hands and feet of Jesus. And so coming off the stage and getting gathering up as a team and getting to the van, there was so much awe of who the Lord is and who the Lord will be in their lives. And so seeing these changes and knowing that when they came back to America, they're still going to be different, knowing that they still know now what their hands can do because they are the hands and feet of Christ. That was what Dream On in 2018 in Honduras was to me. Hey Dreamers, we had 28 people come from the U.S. down to Honduras with us. Over the past few days we have seen emotions run high. We've seen people enjoy themselves to a point that they were uncertain. They didn't know what it was going to be like and then they came and being used as the hands of Jesus has just ministered so greatly to people. Um, from the time that we got in on Thursday night and those the, the worship service, that deep intimate worship um, at a local church down here in Honduras um, to Friday when we got to go out and have the pizza party with the young people and just being able to minister the gospel um, through the love of Jesus to them and then all the way through into the Dream On party where we saw uh, signs and wonders and the whole team getting to pray that God would move in such a powerful way for the people there at the Dream On party has been something that's radically affected. We've had people come up and say that they woke up they were just emotional. They said, I'm changed. I, I didn't expect what God did in me. I expected to be used, but I didn't expect that the Lord would use this Dream On party and this trip to Honduras in the way that He has to rework my insides. And so I can't wait uh, for for, for Dream On 2019 and for you to come out and be a part of what God's doing and uh, Dream On. Now, wasn't that incredible? You just watched Dream on Sueños, an amazing story. And it's not just the story, it really happened and it's going to happen again with Dream on Sueños 2019. Just one of the several things that Dream on World has taking has going on uh, as they are doing the things that God wants them to do. Joining me here in the TV44 studio are the founders, co-founders, Ben Schwartz, Jordan Powell, of course, I know Hannah, your wife is very involved <laughs> yes. in this too. Um, let's talk a little bit about who and what Dream On is. Absolutely. Again, just we appreciate being here, but um, Dream On is, is pretty young. We're only a couple years old and um, actually how Dream On started, it was, a, it was a, an instance, and we talked about this earlier, where I went on a mission trip, I went on a canoe trip, uh, about seven years ago. During that time, I really started to believe that anything was possible with mm -hmm. Christ. And fast forward, um, years after that trip happened, Jordan and I actually sat down for breakfast one morning, and we were contemplating how we could start businesses to help mission work, things like that. Um, and we ended up talking about how so many of our friends were in ministry, and we wanted to be able to do something all together. Um, with going down that same vein of just dreaming with the Lord and just believing that anything was possible. And so we started that day is when Dream On started. We're like, mm -hmm. let's do this. Let's, let's do a conference. You know, let's, st let's start that. Um, so our first conference um, we had a couple years ago. Um, we had uh, Matt Hammett, Derek Johns from Jesus Culture, some other people at our first conference. Um, and Andy. And Andy, yeah, Andy, Andy Lynch, Lynch yeah. was one of our breakouts. That, that was down Just, in Botkins, yes, wasn't it? Yes, down in Botkins. And um, Dream On is, we're stateside, but we're also, our heart's always been international as well. So that first year, we did that first conference, and then we went straight to Honduras that, um, that fall. Um, 
down there and we had at our first event down there we actually had 10,000 people show up <laughs> to our first event and when when you experience things like that and again it's not all about numbers but when you experience things like that and you just see how God can use mm -hmm. you it just makes you want to dream even more so that's kind of the short and sweet of how it got started. I loved watching in the documentary um, just so simple things like feeding a piece of pizza <laughs> and just things that we probably take for granted here Absolutely. in the United States and the love that was felt through that mm -hmm. by you all doing that for those individuals there and for you guys as well. It was Absolutely. a two-way street. Um, but that's not the only thing. Your hearts are internationally, but your hearts are also local. And you've got some things coming up, uh, coming up in March and April that people right here in this area can be a part of. Absolutely, we have a, a worship night that we're a part of in Wapak, actually at the Wapak Theater. It is March 8th, it's a Friday night, it starts at 6 p.m. Um, it's, a, it's a community night of worship, but it's also anything that we're involved in at Dream On um, is all about helping the body of Christ dream again. So um, Pastor Wilmer, actually from Honduras, is flying up. Mm. We're gonna have some unique things going on that night. Uh, it's totally free. Um, event, but it's going to be um, an awesome, powerful night of worship. Great. Jordan, can you talk to us about the uh, business event that's taking place in April? Yeah, so one of the things that Ben and I um, have talked about for, it's been over probably about a year and a half, we've been sort of sitting on the idea and just praying about the right time to do it, but um, so we finally decided a little bit over a year ago that this April um, that we are going to do our first ever business conference, and so we had done some more uh, leadership ministry style uh, uh, conferences before in the past, and we kind of felt like um, you know, we're both kind of entrepreneurial in, in, in spirit, and we thought, you know, we really feel like we could bring um, some things to the table for businesses, and we could um, plan an event with excellence, that, uh, which is one of our core values. And so we have um, one of Dave Ramsey's right-hand man, uh, Ken Coleman, mm -hmm. who uh, hosts the Ken Coleman uh, podcast, is on XM Radio. He's got tons and tons and tons of uh, huge following there, and um, we have... Uh, former Shark Tank um, winner, uh, a good friend of ours, Tom Burden, and we have some other local um, business uh, leaders. And just, uh, you know, we tried to really grab um, the best of who we could around here that would just really help businesses um, dream. And, you know, one of the things we talked about is sometimes in Lima, there's this sort of um, sense of, uh, you know, it's just Lima, it's like mm -hmm. this small thing, but we really feel like that's a lame excuse, you know, that um, the Lord has called us to go into all the world. And so we feel like um, we can really, um, and one of our goals is to really empower businesses to, uh, to dream bigger and to en encourage their employees to dream bigger as well. So Great stuff. Ben Schwartz, Jordan Powell from Dream On World. Not only amazing things happening in Honduras, but right here in this area too. And you can go to their website, dreamon.world, to find out more information about those events that they just talked to you about. Register, plan to attend, pray about things, and consider being a part of their Honduras trip that's taking place, gonna be taking place later on this year. Dreamon.world is the website.